Today on the Locked On Blues podcast, I got something a little different for you guys. I have a crossover episode with Jack Bushman of Locked On Blackhawks as the Blues and Blackhawks do play tomorrow night. We talked about the Blues' rough start to the season, the Blackhawks' surprisingly decent start to the season. Um, great moments in, you know, in the rivalry, all that fun stuff, all in preparation for tomorrow night's matchup. It was a really fun episode to record. I think you guys will definitely enjoy it, so make sure you stay tuned. You're Locked On Blues, your daily podcast on the St. Louis Blues. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks and Lockdown Blues, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Just wanted to say quickly thank you to everyone out there for making both shows your first listen and a reminder that you can check out Lockdown Blackhawks and Lockdown, Lockdown Blues 100% for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm the host of Lockdown Blackhawks, Jack Bushman, joined today by Josh Hyman of Lockdown Blues ahead of this Matchup on Wednesday night at the United Center. Hawks and Blues, always a fun matchup, regardless of, of where these two teams are at. And it's been a pretty uh, eventful start, to say the least, for the St. Louis Blues. Josh, how are you doing? And uh, how are you feeling now that the Blues have kind of rattled off three in a row here and uh, at least eased the tension for a little bit? Yeah. Um, well, to set the stage in case anyone somehow missed it, which if you're a Blues fan, you didn't miss it. And if you're a Blackhawks fan, you probably didn't miss it because what's more fun than laughing at your rival? Um, Blues started out 3-0. and Everything was looking good. And then they proceeded to lose eight in a row in regulation, uh, which was obviously concerning. Then they had a game against San Jose, who was pretty bad. They finally got a win. And then they went into a, a weekend uh, matchup against Vegas and Colorado, both on the road in that order, and somehow beat both of those teams. So... And another three-game losing streak. Uh, If history is any indication, it means we're about to start another eight-game losing streak. But, uh, yeah, I mean, look, I I said heading into the weekend that I would have been more than happy with the split in the games against Vegas and Colorado. Now, obviously, three-game winning streak, it doesn't completely absolve the sins of the eight-game losing streak. But best-case scenario, I suppose, after losing that many games in a row in that fashion. So, I mean, I'm, I'm... I'm optimistic. I think the next few weeks are going to be very telling into the Jekyll and Hyde we've seen of the Blues. We've seen them at their best, and we've seen them, oh boy, at their worst. So probably like a healthy medium somewhere in between is what I'm expecting over these next few weeks. But um, listen, I could have been in a lot worse mood right now if the Blues lost their last three. So, you know, staying afloat. I I feel you. And kind of like on the other end of the spectrum, the Blackhawks, they started 4-2-0, and and people kind of just come to these conclusions I feel like so early and it's just a reminder Mm -hmm. that we are 14 games into a season and for St. Louis I mean it's very relative considering when they won the Stanley Cup in that season midway through it you know the worst team in the entire NHL things can certainly change Uh, and I expect we'll see more of the St. Louis Blues we've seen in their past three games than we did during that eight game losing skid that you just referenced but kind of talk to me what went wrong during that eight game losing streak, Josh? Like what kind of plagued this team? I what, noticed there, what there... didn't go wrong. <laughs> what didn't well, go wrong? Well, tell me about, tell me about it. Was it just everything happening at once? Literally? Yeah. I mean, it was funny because it was like the one thing that I was saying was like, you know, if the defense can be just okay and the goaltending can be good, the blues will be fine. And then they went, are you sure? <laughs> Cause the defense was just okay. The goaltending was good. And then the offense just, forgot how to score for about eight games um and when they did score they pretty much were like oh my god we scored that means we can stop trying um it really just felt like an extremely disjointed effort that's why i never was too i mean i want to say i don't want to say i was never too pessimistic i have a i have a video title of blues the worst team in the nhl but at the end of the day i was like there's no way they could be this bad because it's like exactly what you said it was like everything it wasn't just like oh yeah, you know, their defense is really bad. No, it was like they they couldn't hit the net to save their life. Their special teams was non-existent. 
They couldn't retain any sort of offensive possession. The goaltending was good, but not great. The defense was good, but not great. It was like nothing, nothing was above average for the St. Louis Blues. Every single aspect of their game was below what I expected. So I was like, even if like half these things get resolved, they're going to be a much better team than this. Um, they started cleaning up the, the the special teams a little bit. Um, they started hitting the net more, which honestly I think is just one of the biggest things. You know, it's when you hit the net, it's easier to obviously score goals. It's easier to retain possession. And they stopped turning the puck over so much. Um, they got to the front of the net a ton as well against a team like Colorado, who's one of the most difficult teams to get to the net um, to. So it really feels like night and day. Like if you watch the Blues in their last three games, specifically against Vegas and Colorado, Compared to how they played in those eight game in that eight game losing streak, it was like exactly what I was saying. It's like there's just this, they're just not playing how we know they can play. I, this sounds like such a basic answer, but it's true. You know, it's not like Craig Ruby had to go to the locker room and be like, "Here are the X's and O's." It's like, come on, guys, you're not this bad of a team. Um, and they eventually kind of got everything to click. You know, Jordan Bennington has been really, really good this year. Um, the offense is finally getting it going. Jordan Cairo, who's been under a tremendous microscope has finally gotten it going robert thomas has gotten it going ryan o'reilly started off slow he's picking it up a little bit colton pareko had like one of the best games of his career last night against colorado so it, it really feels like it's everything that all the criticisms that have plagued them not just this year but in years prior were extremely emphasized in that losing streak and they kind of reversed those biggest ones but all in all it's just playing blues hockey like that's that's all it took it was just sticking to what worked for them in the past because they have the same roster that they had last year pretty much besides like david perron and billy Huso. so it, it really was as simple as just do what you know worked in the past don't don't try to force these extra passes don't try to pick the top corner it's better to hit the goalie in the past than hit the glass behind the net so i'm looking forward to them continuing this momentum because that eight game losing streak was painful <laughs> I think the Blackhawks had two or three eight-game losing skids just last season, so I know how that feels. Um, well, when doing some research here on the Blues, I noticed you just talked about, too, hitting the net has kind of been an issue. They're dead last in the NHL in goals per game right now. I'm sure the eight-game losing streak was probably a big reason why that's the case, but uh, I'm curious, what's kind of – Let's, what's caused these struggles offensively? Because look, looking at this offense on paper, and especially what they were able to do last year when they played the Blackhawks too, the power play was just absolutely unstoppable. What, yeah. what's, what's been clicking here in these last few games, if anything? And kind of talk to me about uh, the top six line combinations, or I guess top nine, because St. Louis is a, is a deep team. Talk to me about the line combinations that they're rolling with right now, or at least have been trying to get together here since they've been winning this, winning these past three games. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think it's a matter of the Blues being a little bit overconfident in their offensive ability early. I mean, they had nine 20 goal scorers last year, and eight of those guys returned. Um, and then you got, you know, new guys at the helm, sort of, in uh, Robert Thomas and Jordan Cairo, who kind of led the charge in the issues that I saw. More so Jordan Cairo, just, just trying to be a little too dynamic trying to create the perfect play when in reality if you're as, as skilled as jordan Kyrie, you can kind of keep it simple and it still you know looks dynamic and incredibly skillful because that's kind of just who he is as a player um it really was just a matter of getting back to the basics and you know creating simple offense because the blues have such deep offense that you don't you don't have to rely on like your top line like a team like boston does and that isn't so like trash on Boston. The Boston has a scheme that's worked for years and years and years. It's, hey, we have Brad Marchand, David Pasternak, and Patrice Bergeron. When they're on the ice, we're going to run the offense through them. When everyone else is on the ice, you just got to beat us then. And the Blues kind of have the ability to sort of do the opposite and say, we have, you know, we don't really have one line or one group of guys that's going to completely overwhelm you, but we got nine guys that can, you know, outplay you if they're trying. And one thing that's really, really worked to get Ryan O'Reilly going, they paired him up with Brandon Saad, who was out of the lineup for a decent a decent bit, whose impact was definitely uh, felt, or the lack of impact was definitely felt. He's completely gotten O'Reilly going. Um, and then Pavel Buchnevich, I think, has been the Blues' most consistent offensive player since he joined the team. Putting him with Robert Thomas has been a huge help. Um, but they've really been juggling the lines. You know, Jordan Cairo is technically on the third line right now, but he's still playing with Braden Shen and Ivan Barbashev, at least according to Daily Faceoff. Um, and it's that flexibility in terms of saying, okay, this line isn't working. 
we're going to move you two lines up or two lines down, or we're going to move you to the wing. And, and it really is just a matter of getting to the groups that work. Like I said, O'Reilly and Saad, um, or like Thomas and Buchnevich, kind of like these dynamic duos, Shen and Kairou, and they kind of rotate everybody else. It's just a matter of finding players that, you know, are comfortable playing with one another and building off of that chemistry. Uh, I think O'Reilly had his best game of the season last night. And a big part of that was our, uh, due to playing with Brendan Saad. So hopefully they found something that works, but when they inevitably start to struggle a little bit again, they have the freedom to mix up those lines with such deep offensive uh, abilities. You know, eight guys that scored 20 goals last year, it's not a fluke. So you can you can, you can can play with your lines a lot, and the Blues did that. And finally, they found something that clicked. The Blackhawks are actually uh, – Blackhawks coach Luke Richardson has been jumbling up his forward lines a lot here recently as well. And you kind of mentioned those duos – the Blackhawks have had the same thing with Max Domi and Patrick Kane. We've seen Jonathan Taves and Taylor Radish together. Uh, they've been mixing and matching as well, so interesting to hear that. Uh, my last question I have for you, Josh, before I kind of flip things over, uh, a two-parter. Is Jordan Bennington, do you know, is expected to get the start, or are you guessing that he's getting the start tomorrow? Um, I, I would assume so. Out in the dark at this point, but. I would assume so. I, it, it could just be one of those scheduled, like, is, I know it's not a back-to-back or anything, Um it could just be one of those scheduled. Oh no, they do have a back-to-back. Actually, interestingly enough, they play Washington the next night. So it could, if they go with Grice first, I wouldn't be surprised. But it really is dependent on what they decide there. Um, I could see Bennington getting the start, but if they wanted to save him for the, no offense, slightly higher powered <laughs> Washington Capitals. I, I was thinking it. I, I, I could see that as well. I wasn't going to say it, but I was definitely thinking it. Um, but talk to yeah. me real quick about Grice. Obviously, the Blues um, bring him in as their, their backup this season. Bennington's going to be the guy. You said you've liked what, have, what you've seen out of Bennington. Uh, what have you thought of yeah. Grice in the backup spot so far, if he does get the start? Just Grice, Grice has been good. Um, he is He's not gotten a whole lot of support. Um, his goals against looks a little ugly, and his save percentage looks a little ugly, but he's made a lot of saves. And hasn't gotten much offensive support at all. He hasn't stolen a game yet or, you know, been elite per se in a game yet. I think he did, although he did make like the franchise record for saves in a debut for a Blues goaltender. I think they lost like 40 like something saves. Um, so he's been just as good as they need him to be. You know, I always say like the mark of a above average goalie is they give you a chance to win the game. And then the mark of an elite goalie is they're going to win the game even if you deserve to lose it, you know, like the the elite goalies of the world, they'll p- pitch you a shutout or let up one goal in a game where you get doubled up in shots. That's not Thomas Grice's game and that's okay. You know, he's going to make 25 out of 27 saves, 30 out of three saves and just, you know, give you a chance to win the game. And I think he, there's only been a game or two where he's kind of, not even a game or two, he's only played a few games, but there's been a, a game or so where he's been a little poor. But other than that, it's just been like, yeah, you know, He's a backup goalie. He's he's given up two or three goals, but he's not he's not given up huge momentum killer goals. Just the Blues haven't been scoring for him. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if the offense is going and Grice gets the start. What'll that be like? Because the Blues have a tendency of playing very different hockey in front of their backup versus their starter. Um, you know, so it'll be interesting to see if when they're playing quote unquote good hockey, does that manifest itself? Because at this point we've only really seen the both of them when the blues are playing their worst. So it's not like one goalie's gotten better play. They've both gotten pretty poor play in front of them with Thomas Grice getting the worst of it, but that's because he's gotten less starts. So I like what I've seen out of him. I think overall, if the blues continue to play good hockey, he'll do just what he needs to do and win more games than he loses. Um, Isn't going to steal you any games, like I said, but he isn't gonna be. He isn't exactly a pushover either. So, uh, I, I I'm happy with him as the backup so far because mostly because Bennington has been more than good enough in the starter role. You know, if Bennington has his annual, I forget how to be a starting goalie. I need my backup to come in and play. Then the Blues are in trouble because that's not who Thomas Grice is. But so far, Jordan Bennington has shown no signs of needing that um, like he has in years past. So, fingers crossed there. Well, Josh, I appreciate all that insight on the Blues ahead of this matchup on Wednesday night. Coming up in just a minute, I will turn it over to to you to ask me some questions on the Chicago Blackhawks. But first, real quick here, folks, I need to talk to you all about Mm -hmm. Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all pro and college sports betting needs and sports info this season. You can find all of the latest developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts on whatever game you want to place a wager on. 
Bet Online is also your continued source for all sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and game scores. It's both the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including the M- MLB, NCAA. NHL, of course, NBA, MMA, boxing, golf, whatever you want to bet on, you can find it at betonline.net. So head on over to the website today, or you can also go and download the mobile app to learn more about all of the trends in action. Bet online, where the game starts. All right, back here for segment two. Turning it over now to Josh to ask some questions about the Blackhawks out of this matchup. The floor is yours, my guy. Yeah, so I'm just pull. I got the um, Blackhawks stats page pulled up, and the first one that kind of sticks out to me is seems like you got a bit of a goaltender by committee situation going on. I see you got Stalock, Mrazek, and Soderblom all with six, five, and four starts respectively. Um, Mrazek struggling pretty, pretty heavily more than the others. Uh, is that was that due to injury, or are you guys kind of just still figuring that out? What's what's the uh, what's the situation there, and who should the Blues expect to see in net? Um, and how have they been playing? The Blackhawks goaltender situation, not even just at the NHL level, even down in Rockford too. It's just been injuries everywhere. It's been crazy. Uh, Alex Stalock's currently on injured reserve uh, with a concussion. Gotcha. Stalock just, uh, Stalock's in concussion protocol, excuse me. Mraz had just returned from injured reserve from a groin injury. That's, gotcha. of course, what kind of plagued him the last few years. And ideally, they'd love to have Arvid Soderblom, uh, who's, probably their top goalie prospect. Ideally, they wanted him, they brought in Stalock and Mrazek to let Soderblom kind of be the guy in the AHL and to get consistent action down there, but uh, they just kind of have had their hand forced due to injury. So Soderblom's been up here for the past couple of weeks now, and he's been really solid for being only 23 years old. He's very poised. Doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes. Um, he kind of has a problem with, I think he doesn't know how to play the puck very well at all. It seems like every time he skates out of his net, I'm about to have a heart attack. But he's been really good, and he's the one that actually is in line to get the start against the Blues. So uh, it's going to be Wonderful. a tough test for him, his first kind of look at this little division rivalry. But, hey, he's been challenged a lot in his couple of starts that he's made this season, and he's been spectacular. So, uh, honestly, he's probably the best goalie the Blackhawks have right now, but obviously being in this full-blown rebuild, they can afford to be mega patient with all of their prospects mm-hmm. right now. So not with just Soderblom, a lot of guys we've seen could be up in the NHL maybe right now, but they'd rather have them in Rockford getting all of those opportunities. So uh, that's why Soderblom is up right now. And yeah, it looks like he's going to be the one to get the start for the Hawks tomorrow, Josh. Fun. The Blues love to make young, inexperienced goalies look like the second coming of uh, Dominic Ashik. So <clears throat> that'll be fun. Um, looking at the stat sheet, I mean, there's one there's one big uh, elephant in the room. Jonathan Taves, a lot of people, myself included, kind of thought he was um, past his prime. And he now has seven goals in 15 games, pretty much double your next highest goal scorer. Is that a fluke or, or is Taves back for one more year before he gets traded up at the blind? <laughs> just kidding Honestly, he's he's gonna get dealt if i had to guess one way or the other especially if he's playing like this like yeah you know, the Black I, was, I was surprised to see that yeah he's like almost up to his goal total from last year he had like 12 last year i think yes yes he didn't score yeah. a goal until his 25th game last year it was yeah and he's got seven already yeah it was just a it was just a brutal year all in all for jonathan taze he was really kind of behind the eight ball a little bit returning from that illness. And, you know, he was just away mm. from the game for so long. It was pretty obvious that he just wasn't at that speed yet. And in the second half of last season, we definitely saw some more signs that this was possible, but I don't think anyone expected Jonathan Taze to be, you know, like a point per game guy right now. And I think he's, he's one of the best, if not the best in the NHL at the faceoff dot too. He's winning like 62% of his faceoffs. Uh, should be an interesting matchup between he and Ryan O'Reilly, notoriously another one of the top. 64%. My goodness. Yeah. Hayes is rattling all. So all aspects of his game right now have really been phenomenal. And you know what? I, I feel like maybe just the biggest difference is the finished product. Like pucks are going in for him this year, and it just didn't feel like it was happening last year. And his shooting percentage is up right now. But it, it just feels like he finally has that confidence and that 
you know, focus and awareness that he has what it takes still to be able to do this. I feel like maybe there were times last year where he wasn't even sure himself if he was still capable of that. So I feel like this has been a, a big proving point to not only just, you know, the rest of the NHL, but also to Jonathan Tay is that, hey, I could still be a two-way impact player like I was, you know, five, six years ago. And it's been really fun to see. He's been having a lot of fun, which is awesome. Yeah, I mean, we talked about at the beginning of the the season in our last crossover how we kind of wanted to hope hope that Blues and Blackhawks got fun again, um, and you know the Black the uh, contending team when the Blues play season, and maybe the Blues won't even be a contending team. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but uh, I think the biggest part of that was like Taves and Kane versus you know the Blues superstars, and a bit of a change in the guard for the Blues. You know, no Petrangelo um the guys that made that iconic no Keith for the Blackhawks but I feel like the the fundamental core pieces you know Tarasenko Kane Taves they're still there so with both of those guys you know seeming like they're still at the peak of their game it's gonna be a fun game um a couple fun matchups this season I'm hoping the Blues are at their best and I'm hoping to play a team like the Blackhawks will make them you know elevate to that level uh because they definitely need to continue that momentum but it should be a really fun game I'm looking forward to it I'm super stoked and the Blues have really gotten the best of the Blackhawks the last like three or four years it's felt like it hasn't even been a rivalry the Blues have just been nope. taking it to the hall great uh yeah I'm glad you've been able to enjoy it it's been miserable <laughs> uh, but this actually does feel like the bunch that you know I'm not gonna go and say they're gonna win this game but I certainly expect them to be competitive they've been competitive basically every night so far this season and we've seen it against Edmonton they beat you know granted early on in the season they beat the Florida Panthers uh they've hung in there that's kind of been the niche of this Blackhawks team they've rolled with the punches and they've found ways to make things interesting late so hopefully this will be uh the team that at least makes it more of a, um, a competitive matchup here in the first meeting between these two teams this season tomorrow night uh, but Josh, before we wrap things up, why don't we get into some predictions and some keys to victory, if that sounds good to you? Yes, sir. Love to do that. <laughs> awesome. But first, sorry to tease the listeners out there. I do have to get another quick ad read in. I got to talk to you all real quick about Simply Safe because the numbers don't lie. In the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe home security to protect their homes. And you don't earn the, the trust of that many people without doing something right. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. And I know because I use Simply Safe in my own home. And here are some of my favorite things about it Simply Safe blankets your home in protection with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door, along with hazard sensors that will instantly detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. You can also go and customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes by checking out simplysafe.com slash lockdown NHL. And you can also save another 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan. Again, all you have to do is go and visit simplysafe.com slash lockdown NHL to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right, back here for segment three. Apologies for that uh, little teaser there before this final segment to wrap up the show. Getting into some predictions and some kind of keys to victory. Last little things ahead of this matchup between the Blackhawks and Blues. Uh, Josh, if you got any keys you think for St. Louis to kind of keep this rolling in this first matchup between these two teams, what do you think they are? And what do you got for a final prediction for me? Yeah, I mean, the Blues have definitely found success over the last three games. Um but I think a big thing to them is staying grounded and, and kind of remembering, hey, you know, we just lost eight games and we know how easy it is to lose focus for, you know, on one little thing. And then we, they, they, it's pretty obvious how that can snowball into an eight game regulation losing streak and burst in franchise history. Um, I've talked a lot, not just on this episode, but in general about just keeping things simple for the Blues offense, uh, you know, sticking with what works, trusting the guys in your line, but also trusting yourself when to shoot, when to pass, blah, blah, blah. And I think, I think that's really what it comes down to is just sticking with what works, you know, especially against a team like Chicago, that should motivate something in these guys, you know, the, the energy in the arena is going to be different. It's going to be feel like a playoff game in there. A lot of the players on the team are going to have a little of that, a little bit of that personal, personal gripe, whether it be Saad who maybe wants to score against his former club or any of the blues members who have some, some good memories from the rivalry that give them a little bit of extra motivation. Um, 
So it's it's about you know sticking with not just what's worked against teams this year, but what's worked against the Blackhawks in the past. Um, because like you said, they've it's kind of been pretty one sided in years past, and it's the same Blues team the Blackhawks have been seeing for a year or so now. Um, and the Blues know that that works last year pretty pretty handedly. So it's it's about it's about sticking to that. And I think if if guys like Brendan Saad and Ryan O'Reilly can do their thing well. Jordan Cairo continues to elevate and he's, he's yet to have that, that big game, you know, he's, he's building up to it. And if, if some of his line mates could finish the pass that he's been setting up, he's due for a couple, three, four point nights. Um, plus, you know, d- depending on who starts in net, Bennington, Grice, it's about, about putting a good performance in front of them. One of the blues biggest issues is they just don't support their goalie. And by the end of the game, it, it just weighs on them. When you see these like five goal games for opponents, it's because the goalies kept the blues in it for only so long. So put, put a good, put a good strong performance in front of whoever's in that um, work on those dynamic duos on offense. If Jordan Kyrie is able to get going, like I said, and continue to ascend, it's going to be a tough night for the Blackhawks because he likes play, scoring against the Blackhawks. I'm pretty sure I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I feel like him, Tarasenko, especially Tarasenko, loves. Don't even talk to me box. about Tarasenko. I, it's like I oh have to bet anytime goal score because it just happens every game. I swear to God. Yeah, he he likes scoring against the Blackhawks. Like it's it's it, it's a perfect opportunity to do exactly what I've been saying and just and just trust yourself. I feel like that's the biggest thing the Blues been struggling with is is not is overthinking a little bit too much, making an extra pass when you don't need to, thinking a little bit too much about your shot and then firing it wide versus going for a rebound. It, if there's anything that can motivate them to, to stick to the basics, play hard um, and play consistent, you know, special teams, it, it sounds so generic. I sound like I'm a coach trying not to give anything away to the media, but it's, it, but it's true it's because so much went wrong for the blues in their eight game losing streak that it's like, it, the solution is so easy. It's like, Hey, just don't do any of that, you know? And it really kind of almost feels like we're, they started the season off fresh again in those three wins. Cause it's like, you have to completely flush everything that happened before that. I don't care that they won three games. Those don't count either because whatever you were doing over those eleven games, it wasn't right. So you know, it's 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 that it's it's those important things, the little things. That's all it is. The Blackhawks aren't you know a team like Colorado or Tampa where you have to play perfect hockey and a perfect scheme to beat this juggernaut. No, it's 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 a team that you're better than on paper. That if you go out, play consistent, don't take dumb penalties, and when you do, play good on the penalty kill. If if you play right you'll win if you're the St. Louis Blues. That's it. Prediction? Hmm. I'm feeling a big scoring night. I'm feeling... This might be a hot take. I'm feeling six goals from the Blues. Heater. But, uh, yeah. They're, they're due. They're is due to just... Is it going to be lopsided, or is it going to be a close shootout? That's the thing. I don't know. Because I feel like they're due to finally have everything click offensively. You know, they've had some good offensive games here and there, but they've yet to have one of the games that they had you know, six or seven of last year where they just they just could not be stopped. They looked at the Harlem Globetrotters out there. They haven't had that yet this season. I feel like they're building to it. And a team like Chicago, um, energy is going to be crazy. Uh, players are going to be extra motivated. Players know that they lost a bunch of games in a row. Extra motivation. If everything clicks, watch out. I feel like it could be a big, big offensive performance. Now, could that come with a bit of a lack of attention on the defensive end? Yeah. Give me, you know, let's be crazy. Give me 6-4. Six four blues. I like it. I think I'm gonna be there. So I'd love to see a ten goal Ooh. game. If the Blackhawks don't win. I, I'm all in for that. Uh, but on my side of things, I, I have a couple of keys that I have. Offensively, the Blackhawks have been dog water for the past week and a half. They have four goals in their last four games total. They've been shut out twice during that stretch. And I think it starts with Patrick Kane in that top line. And look, this is just the reality of the situation. The Blackhawks, I, I know they did it early on in the year but they're probably not going to win many games when Patrick Kane's held off the score sheet this season. That's just not a recipe for success for them. And uh, he's been held off the score sheet in four of his last five. So he needs to get going. Max Domi needs to play better alongside him. I thought Domi had a couple of really good opportunities in their last game against the Hurricanes. One of them hit the post. So uh, hopefully that top line can kind of set the momentum and get things going for a struggling Blackhawks offense going into this one. And another one is the penalty kill. I kind of hinted at this earlier, but the Blues power play, I know David Perron's gone and he was a huge part of their success against the Blackhawks last year. Uh, it, it just feels like the Blues power play has diced the Blackhawks PK for a couple of years now. I remember even in the preseason, they, 
Uh, it, it was like, a, I think, a 7-1 Blues win, 6-1 Blues win in the preseason. They had four power play goals. It was like, oh, my goodness, is this a bad dream that just happens four times a year? Uh, I think it's really important for the Blackhawks PK to shut the door down on the Blues power play. And the Hawks PK has been interesting. It feels like whenever they're good, they're really good. Um, they had another solid night against Carolina on Tuesday, good against Anaheim. But then they've when they're bad, they're terrible. Gave up three power play goals to Winnipeg. Edmonton and Colorado already this season. So have the PK be solid. And I think that will go a long way for the Blackhawks. Uh, as far as my final prediction, now you got me feeling some type of way, Josh. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm open for goals now. I'm going to go uh, the, ah, toughy. I am going to go five, four blues in overtime. Okay. I think the Blackhawks okay. have the ability to keep this close. Uh, and, and look, losing isn't the end of the world. I, I know there's some, fans out there who get upset when your team doesn't win every game it's like the Chicago Bears look Justin Fields is looking great we don't want to win that's that's the foundation it's okay to not win for this Blackhawks team so even as much as it sucks losing to St. Louis uh all we really should care about Blackhawks fans is being competitive and I think they can do that against this Blues team so that's what I'm looking for uh and hey look if my prediction's wrong that means the Blackhawks won so it's gonna be a win-win for me uh, but as you mentioned earlier, Josh, I'm stoked for this matchup. Always fun when these two teams battle together. And just want to say thank you for squeezing this in. I yeah. know you got to get on out just of here. For, uh, no, no worries. Just for clarity's sake, I looked up um, most goals scored against the Blackhawks by active Blues players. Vladimir Tarasenko has played 32 career games against the Blackhawks. How many goals do you think he has in those 32? 32? Is that just regular season or is that regular and post? Probably just regular season, I guess, if you're looking it up. Uh, it doesn't say, but yeah, I would, 32 guess, feels like too guess, little. I'm going to guess 26. 26? You're a little, a little generous. He's got 20 goals and 12 assists in 32 games against the Blackhawks. Yeah. O'Reilly's next with 13. Shen's got seven. Buchnevich with four goals in nine games against the Blackhawks. Yeah, he's Kairou, got only two goals. He's got to, he's got to step it up. Come on, Jordan. <laughs> But yeah, it's fine. Robert Bertuzzo, two goals against the Blackhawks in his career. I feel like he only has like ten career goals. So may have to I've uh, been... may have to sprinkle oh, something dude. on the DraftKings with that knowledge, dude. dude if Robert Bertuzzo, I, I every single night I, I uh, lay a note under my pillow that says, "Please let Robert Bertuzzo score." Every single night I sleep on that. It doesn't work. But when he does, the bench the bench goes crazy. You think he just scored like. Game seven overtime winner Stanley Cup final. So if that happens against the Blackhawks, nonetheless, oh man, that's that's what the Blackhawks would do if Jack Johnson scores because he notoriously <laughs> got one in like his last two hundred games. And of course, it came against the Blackhawks. So that's how things yeah. go here in Chicago. But anyways, Josh, I'll let you get on out of here. Thank you again Appreciate for making it. The time to get this in, uh, and thank you no to everyone much. out there for listening to this crossover. Uh, make sure, if you're not already, to go and show some support to both Lockdown Blackhawks and Lockdown Blues. It's 100% for free wherever you want to check it out. And also make sure to go and check out Lockdown Sports Today. Make that your second listen after this, folks. It's available on this app, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts, and it will provide you the, the biggest stories in sports with insight that only Lockdown can provide. So make sure to make Lockdown Sports Today your second listen. Once again, I'm Jack Bushman from Lockdown Blackhawks, Josh Hyman from Lockdown Blues. Thank you, everyone, again, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.